everyone, it's Phil Frost from Main Street ROI, and I have a guest presenter here, Fred Valleys from Optimizer. And Fred is one of the first 500 employees at Google, and he has over 10 years, or he actually worked at Google for over 10 years, uh, working um, with Google AdWords specifically, and actually was there uh, to help create the AdWords editor, which uh, is a tool to make edits to your Google AdWords campaign. So Fred has a ton of experience specifically with Google AdWords, knows a, a lot about uh, Google AdWords, the, uh, the interface, how it works, how it was uh, actually built. He was uh, right there at the beginning. And uh, he's gonna be talking today about the Google AdWords quality score, what it is, how to improve it, why it's important. And I'm actually very excited to hear what Fred has to say. I'm going to be taking lots of notes. So, Fred, with that, take it away. Cool. Thank you, Phil. And thanks, everyone, for attending today. Um, so I'm actually kind of curious uh, where people are located and what kind of businesses they have. So if folks want to type into the chat window and kind of say hello to me, then that will help me frame my presentation with a few examples that might be more relevant to your specific industries. But... Like Phil said, um, I spent a lot of time at Google, so uh, uh, this is what I look like. This is me, uh, one of Google's events uh, a couple of years ago where we were trying to get small businesses to go online and start doing online advertising. Uh, the image is a bit stretched out, so I'm a little bit skinnier than I look on that picture, uh, but you kind of get the sense there, right? And so at Google, I spent 10 years, and they actually hired me because they needed someone who spoke Dutch, and I'm originally from Belgium. And so they needed someone who spoke Dutch to help translate AdWords uh, for the Dutch market, the Dutch and the Belgian markets. So that was the sixth language that we were doing AdWords. And I happen to live in the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, speak the right language. And so I got hired at Google. I'm super excited about that. Now, uh, I had dabbled in PPC, pay-per-click marketing, as far back as 1998 when I was in my dorm room. In college, I, uh, I would go and buy videos from Blockbuster, and I would resell them on eBay. And one of the ways that I uh, got traffic and people to buy these videos was to buy keywords on a search engine called GoTo at the time. And I would pay per click. Um, so I kind of knew the industry, was super excited to start working at Google and then ended up working on a lot of the different tools that advertisers use nowadays. In fact, Phil is going to be doing um, a webinar here in about two weeks that we're doing together again. And it's on the topic of conversion tracking. And conversion tracking was actually the first thing that I worked on for Google. So I had been running campaigns, and I knew one of the most important things to do is to understand when you're spending money on keywords to know what the results are and which keywords are actually producing results and which ones might be producing results but too expensively. Um, and so I built conversion tracking. Now, the reason I'm talking about quality score today is it's definitely a topic that people care about very passionately. Um, there's also a lot of misconceptions about it. And it's a team that I happened to be on for about seven years. So I was on the team when we introduced the notion of quality score. Uh, before that, it was actually called something else, and I'll get into that in just a little bit. But after 10 years at Google, uh, like Phil was saying, it was 500 people roughly when I joined it. And by the time I left, it was 60,000 people. So it had grown tremendously. It was an amazing ride for me. It was really fun to be at that company. Uh, and by the way, Google has amazing benefits. So all the stories you hear about how well they treat their employees, how fun it is to work there, uh, all of that is true. But I joined it when it was a startup because that's what I like doing. And by the time I left, it wasn't a startup anymore. So I decided to do my own startup, and that is a company called Optimizer. And so obviously that's not the main purpose uh, here today, but I did want to tell you what I'm working on. So we have tools to help uh, make it easier to manage pay-per-click accounts. So anything from reports, to data insights, one-click optimizations, and this really advanced technology called enhanced scripts. So through this, we're able to do some pretty amazing things. Um, and I'll give you more information if you do want to try it out towards the end of the call. But the real focus of the call today is quality score. So we're going to talk about what it is, how Google goes about calculating it. Uh, that may give you some insights into how to improve your quality score, uh, which is then the next section. And then I want to leave plenty of time for Q&A. Uh, we do have a hard stop here at the top of the next hour. I will probably be talking for about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, if I see a lot of questions coming in, I'll take those at the end of every section. I will also reserve a little bit of time at the end for any questions that people have. 
So with that, let's uh, jump into it and let's talk about what quality score is. So uh, quality score is kind of like a cow. Okay, you might ask, how is quality score like a cow? Uh, well, the cow actually represents a guy by the name of Sir Francis Galton. He was a scientist in the early 1900s and he came up with the notion of the wisdom of the crowds. Uh, he actually gave it a name. So it's a notion that had been around since the Greek days, but he gave it a name. And what he did is he went to a county fair and one of the common games people would play at a county fair back in the early 1900s was to look at a piece of livestock and guess how much it weighed, hence the cow. Uh, and whoever got the closest guess to the actual weight of that cow or pig or whatever it was got to take it home. Now, uh, here was the, the theory. The, he said, let's average all the guesses together. So the guesses from farmers, butchers, housewives, little kids. And let's take all of those and let's take the average. And I think that's going to be closer to the actual weight than the guess of any one individual expert. And now you figure that a little kid is probably going to come up with some crazy number for how much that cow weighs. But a butcher or a farmer probably should know how much a cow like that weighs. They should be able to get pretty close. And he said, no, that's not going to be the case. It's going to be the average of all the guesses. And it turns out he was actually right. Um, and so since that day, the wisdom of the crowds has been applied in many, many places. And Google was very smart and said, we're also going to use the wisdom of the crowds to come up with this notion of quality score. So basically what Google says is, well, we have all these people who are searching for things on the Google search engine. And we show them search results and uh, organic results, and we also show them ads. And now, how do we know the wisdom of the crowds? Well, people, they vote with clicks. So whenever it's shown on the page, not everything gets a click. Google looks at what is being clicked on, how quickly it's being clicked on, uh, how, how many times it's being clicked on, and all of that gives them the information about the wisdom of the crowds, right? So. Um, and this applies equally well to the organic side as to the advertising side. But today we're talking about the advertising side because that's where we have the notion of quality score. And the, on the organic side, it's called uh, something completely different. Right? So now you, you might ask a question, why did Google even decide to come up with this whole notion of quality score? And why did the wisdom of the crowds really matter in this scenario? Well, the quality score, as it says here, is really Google's way of balancing the interests of multiple parties in an ecosystem. Uh, okay, so if you have an ecosystem where you have the search results pages and ads on it, well, remember about 10 years ago before quality score existed, before Google was doing very relevant advertising, you saw all these spammy ads. I mean, who remembers the punch the monkey ads? Um, you know, the, the, the ads for credit cards when you weren't looking for a credit card you'd be on all these websites and it was just annoying how many ads were being shown that had nothing to do with what you actually cared about. And so this whole notion of ad blindness came in. And obviously that was bad for the ecosystem because here you have all these businesses and much like uh, all the people on this call today, you're trying to find new customers for yourselves. And you actually have good products, you have good services, but who's looking for those? Well, if you could actually connect with people searching for your uh, whatever it is you do, that's going to make a great connection. If you're blindly just putting out your ads to anyone and everyone, then 99% of those people are going to be annoyed that they see your ad because it's not relevant to them. So the users get pissed off. You as advertisers, you get no results. Plus, you're probably spending a boatload of money on CPM advertising. CPM stands for cost per mille. So you pay on a cost per impression basis. So you're wasting money showing ads to people who don't care. And then the publishers, they're failing too. I mean, Yahoo, uh, if you follow the news, Yahoo's not doing so hot. And this was a Yahoo display, right? It was display advertising. It was showing these useless ads to people. Um, and so they weren't making any money because people would start to ignore the ads and then advertisers wouldn't want to pay for them anymore. And so the whole ecosystem was failing. And so the quality score brings the interests of these three groups together. And that's why Google has it. If you show a high relevant, uh, very relevant ad, the user likes it. They don't even think it's an ad. This is a little bit hard to do in this kind of an audience, but uh, I would do this speech for a lot of live audiences as well. And so one of the questions I would ask was, who here in this audience has never clicked on an ad on Google? And more than half of the hands in the room would always go up. And I would look at them and I would say, I know you guys are lying because I know how much money Google makes. Google makes $60 billion a year in advertising revenues. Okay, I know people are clicking on the ads and I know in the room 
it's definitely not half of the people who've never clicked on an ad. Now, the reason that people raise their hands is not actually that they're lying, it's just that they didn't think it was an ad because what they saw actually answered a question, a need that they had, and so they didn't feel like it was an ad. It felt like, hey, it's answering what I need, hence it, it must be organic, it must be a good thing, okay? And so the publishers are happy too because now Google's making money selling all these clicks, the users are happy because they're finding what they need, and the advertisers are happy because they're only paying on a CPC cost per click basis when somebody clicks on the ad, when they're actually interested in what it is that they're providing. So that's why Quality Score exists. Now, uh, I've explained why Quality Score exists to make an ecosystem better. But none of you on the call are ecosystems. You're all individuals, you all have your own business. And so why does Quality Score matter to you, right? Um, we're all a little bit selfish, so let's bring it down to the individual level. So Quality Score influences a lot of things that we all care about. Uh, first and foremost, it determines whether we are eligible to show an ad for a certain keyword, for a certain search. If our business, if our ad is not relevant enough to what the user is searching for, then we're simply not eligible to show the ad on that certain page. Um, so why do you think it is you can look up football scores on Google and you never see an ad for a Ford pickup truck? It's the best-selling pickup truck, uh, it's the best-selling car, in fact, in the world, the F-150. Why is it that they can't show an ad for uh, the most popular sport in the United States? Well, it's because it's not relevant. If people look for football scores, they're not looking to buy a truck, right? That's brand advertising. That's not what Google search is all about. So if your ad is not relevant to what the user is searching for, you're not eligible, and that's determined by quality score. Now, once you've determined, or once Google has determined that you're eligible to show, there's two other things that come into play. So what is going to be your ad rank? And I'll explain that in the next slide. But uh, who's going to be number one? Who's going to be number two, et cetera? And then, very importantly, these days, who's eligible to show at the top of the page? Who gets a top slot? So now the ads are split between the top of the page and the bottom of the page. And obviously, most people want to get top of the page results because they get more impressions, they get more visibility, typically get a higher CTR click-through rate, so they get more uh, prospective leads coming from that. Now, you've probably noticed you can do a number of searches on Google, and you're not always going to see the same number of ads at the top of the page. In fact, in some searches, you may see no ads at the top of the page, or you may see no ads at all on the whole page. And this is because Google says, well, the ads need to be just as relevant as the organic results. And so the organic result is what Google uh, determined through its algorithms, what was the best answer to a question. And so if you want to advertise, you have to be just as relevant, if not more so, than those results. And that's what makes you eligible to go to the top of the page. Okay, once you've hit that second tier and now you've been ranked, maybe you have the top slot, the final things that come out of the quality score is how much do you have to pay for that click? Um, as your quality score goes up, your cost goes down, so your price comes down. So there's a big benefit to having a higher quality score. DKI, DKI stands for Dynamic Keyword Insertion. Uh, this is a great way to make your ads look more relevant by automatically inserting whatever the keyword was into the ad text. And by the way, a lot of people get this wrong, but DKI is dynamic keyword insertion. Keyword is the, is the key word here. It's not dynamic query insertion. So it's not whatever the user typed in that's going to show in the ad. It's whatever keyword from your account was matched that's going to show up. So uh, you're not going to show crazy ads with whatever random things the user typed in. It's still going to be controlled by the keyword list that you maintain. So, so it's actually going to look pretty nice. But DKI only works if you have a certain quality score. So if your quality score is not good enough, then you can't automatically show the keyword inside of the ad. It's kind of a catch-22 here, where in the beginning you kind of have to build up a good enough quality score to become eligible, uh, but it's not the end-all solution to relevance problems. And then extensions show up as well. So ad extensions are a tremendously important part of advertising today. They can really boost your click-through rates but you're not eligible to use extensions until you've proven that the ad in and of itself is relevant enough and has a high enough quality score. So let me illustrate this. So this is uh, you know, a, a screen from my tool Optimizer. Uh, what we're tracking here is two lines. So the blue line is the quality score, and the yellow line is the average cost per click. And this is, I believe, um, for a specific keyword. And so what you notice is when the quality score, when the blue line goes down by a few points, the average cost per click goes up uh, a few days later. 
And so that, that makes sense, right? Because if that advertiser is trying to maintain the same position, well, if the quality score drops to maintain that same position, the cost per click has to go up. Uh, let me zoom in on it here. And then you might also notice that a few days later, the cost per click actually goes down. And that may be because the advertiser took a few days to notice, oh, wow, my, uh, my CPC is all of a sudden really high. Maybe I'm spending more than I'm comfortable spending. So let me go and make some adjustments. And they didn't in this case. Uh, they weren't able to fix the quality score, but they were able to say, well, my CPC, I'm going to reduce it so that I'm not spending quite as much. And so you see how these two factors kind of interact with each other. So the, the important point here is, as your quality score goes down, your CPC goes up, and vice versa, of course, as well. So if you improve your quality score, you're going to get a lower cost per click that you have to pay. Um, and this is all based on a simple formula. So the, the simple magic of ad ranking. Now, when I joined Google, this was in 2002, the existing system said that the ads are going to be ranked based on the click-through rate, CTR, multiplied by the maximum CPC bit. That was your ad rank. And so what was beautiful here is that if you were to double your CTR, then that literally meant that you had to bid half as much for the bid. Okay, so double CTR, half the maximum bid. So they were directly or they were inversely correlated to each other. Uh, so it was very simple to understand. Then when I was working there, we decided that we were going to name it Quality Score. Um, and it wasn't just a naming change. It was actually looking beyond just the CTR. Um, so there's different ways of looking at click-through rate. And it was hard to explain this to people. So we said, let's just give it a new name. And that became Quality Score. And I'll explain in a moment which factors of CTR go into Quality Score. Uh, but that changed the mix around a bit. And then uh, the system that we have nowadays is saying that the ad rank is actually a factor of three things, your maximum bid, your quality score, and your ad extensions. Um, and this is important because it's no longer a straight up multiplication. And this enables Google to do certain things like do out of order promotion. Uh, it means Google has a lot more flexibility to show the right ads in the right situations. Uh, and what do I mean by out of order promotion? Well, in the old days, Google had this rule that if you were the highest ranked advertiser, your ad always had to show as the first one on the page. And then the next highest ranked ad could show up. Now, they had this other rule, which was an absolute rule, which was only ads that have been reviewed and approved can show up at the top of the page. Okay, so some um, crazy advertisers figured there'd be nothing better than to go advertise on their competitors' keywords and they would try to get the number one position and they would constantly keep changing the ads so that it kept being unreviewed. And so hence, all of the ads were being pushed off to the right-hand side. This was back in the day when right-hand side ads still showed up. And Google said, this is a big problem. I mean, so this number two advertiser, their ads are approved. They're actually eligible to go to the top of the page, but there's this number one ad that keeps doing this weird behavior of changing the ad text just to force everyone off to the side of the page. And Google said we need to be able to do something about this, and that's where out-of-order promotion came into play. Um, so things are no longer a straight-up multiplication. There's a whole function around it now. Uh, it's, it's many factors. Uh, but the bottom line is it allows Google to do the right thing in all the right situations. So it makes it much harder for advertisers to game the system um, and mess with their competitors, if you will. So that's the system that we have in place today. Now, over the past... A uh, year and a half, Google has made two changes to quality score, and I'll explain briefly what these are. So in July of 2015, Google said, we're going to um, say that any keyword that's new in the system is going to start off with a quality score of six. And by the way, six is be going to become the average quality score. The same is going to happen for all of the three subcomponents of quality score. So they're all going to start with average. So what you can see on the day that the change was made, we're looking here on this chart at the account level quality score for a particular account. Before it was around an eight, after the change, it went closer to a six. Okay, so the account level quality score went much closer to the average because a lot of the keywords in that account didn't have enough data. And here you see another visualization from Optimizer. And, uh, and so this is basically saying quality score six is the new normal. Uh, let me briefly explain this chart here. So the light colored bar that you see is the date before the change, and the dark color is the date after the, the change that Google made. And this is how many keywords exist at each of the 10 levels of quality score. 
So it's saying before the change, they roughly had about 600 keywords with a quality score of six. But after Google made that change, more than 900 keywords were at a quality score of six. So it kind of indicates that there's roughly 300 keywords here that Google just didn't have enough information for. So they put them back towards the average. And you can see this account actually had a lot of quality score 10 keywords before. After the change, a lot of these keywords seem to have shifted up to the or down to the quality score six bucket. Um, so that's the change Google made about a year ago. ago. Now, this, uh, this was kind of a challenging change because in the past, we could have looked at quality scores and if we see a keyword with a quality score of six, we know it's actually a quality score of six. Now we have to ask the question, is it a quality score of six because that's the quality score? Or is it because Google doesn't know anything about it yet? Okay, so that kind of confuses the whole thing. Um, and it's not ideal because it's, it's really making it hard for us to uh, answer some questions. So uh, I've kept the same image up on the slide to, to illustrate uh, the, the same point, but now Google in about two weeks, so on October 10th, they're going to make a change where keywords that don't have enough data will start off with a, with a quality score of null, and that's gonna be reported in the interface as dash dash. Um, so no longer are you gonna have these quality score six keywords. So after the change, we're once again gonna have an actual quality score curve that we can look at. And if we see a quality score of six, we'll know it's because that keyword is actually at a quality score of six. So it's gonna clarify things quite a bit. Now I do recommend, uh, because Google is making this quality score change, I like to see what's happening before and after these changes because Google says they're not gonna do a whole lot, but who knows, right? There could always be second order effects. And if you're not measuring it, then it's gonna be really hard for you to answer questions about what changed before and after. Um, so the, the other thing I wanted to talk about was what's the correlation be between quality score and first page bid, FBB, that's first page bid. Um, so we had Optimizer, we thought it'd be really interesting to try to measure the actual monetary impact of improving your quality score. And so the way that we thought we could do that is by looking at the first page bid estimate that Google gives us. So here's what we were thinking. If we have a quality score of five one day, and our first page bid is a dollar, and the next day our quality score goes up by one point to say a six, and our first page bid goes down to 75 cents, then we could say that there was a 25% decrease in cost because the improvement in quality score. Um, so we actually took a complicated way to measure this because we had to discount for any competitive pressure. So changes that competitors might be making in their bids and then sort of outside factors. Uh, but anyway, we analyzed the data in a way that we got rid of all those outside factors. And we saw something really interesting. So we saw that 71%, um, which is the total of that middle column right there, 71% of keywords that had a change in quality score had no change in first page bid estimate. Okay, that was really weird because if you really believe that quality score has an impact on how much you have to spend to be on the page, then that number shouldn't be as high as 71%. So what this told us was that there's actually a disconnect in the system for Google between when they update quality scores and when they update, update first page bid estimates. So that's important to know because there are some bid strategies that tie you into first page bid. Uh, I was working with one agency and they actually had a strategy that said, we always wanna promote our keywords to be at least at the first page bid level. Uh, well, it turns out that that data sometimes was out of date, and so even if they were bidding up to that level, they still wouldn't get to first page bids. They, they, would, they still wouldn't get to the first page. Um, and so this may explain sort of why that disconnect is happening. So it's important to understand um, how these update cycles happen. By the way, what I can tell you is that the update cycle for quality score um, it is not sequential, if you will. So roughly, Google will update every keyword in the system once every 24 hours. If it's a very high volume keyword, they will update it more frequently. It could be a couple of times per day. Um, but here's kind of the key thing. So it's not like they say, oh, we're gonna go into Jimmy's account and update all of his quality scores. And then we're gonna go into Jane's account and update all of her quality scores. No, that's not how it works. It's not even ad group by ad group. They literally go through a list of keywords. And so they might be updating a keyword in one ad group and then they go to a different ad group in a completely different account, they update that one, and then they come back to another ad group. And so uh, people say, well, couldn't Google tell me how fresh my quality scores are, how fresh my first page bid estimates are? 
and the reality is no, they can't do it because it would almost be a keyword level data. Uh, so, so they can't do this for you at the account level. Um, so that's a question I get frequently and that's kind of how that works. Anyway, um, the, the other kind of myth that I wanted to debunk here is to explain that the quality score that you see in the account is not linear, right? So remember in the past, if you doubled your CTR, you would have to pay half as much for the CPC. So people kind of got tied into this notion that if you double your quality score, you only have to pay half as much. So it's saying if you go from QS4 to QS8, people thought, oh, then I only have to pay half as much because my ad rank doubles. Well, that's not the case. Um, there's a lot of data out there that says this is the case, but if you think about it a little bit, that doesn't actually make sense. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll give you a moment here to look at this data, but basically if you look at the one on the right-hand side, so it says that if your quality score is a 10 um, versus being at a quality score of 5, you get a 50% discount. And so that's if you reverse the math here, you're basically saying going from um, a 5 to a 10 doubles your quality score, hence you get a 50% discount on how much you have to pay. Um, and that's not true, okay? And why is that not true? Well, uh, think about it for a second, right? If the quality score of five has to be associated with some level of click-through rate in the back end. Um, so if you say that a 10 is a perfect quality score, then you would be assuming that that's also a perfect CTR. That's 100% of all people who see your ad clicking on it. Well, that's clearly not the case, right? So there's something a little bit more complicated going on behind the scenes, because if you have a quality score of 10, you can still get a CPC discount by further improving your click-through rate. Google thinks you have an awesome keyword, you got a 10, but that doesn't mean that's the end of it. You can still achieve lower cost by improving your CTR. And so we at Optimizer, we did a, a little bit of a research project here. And we said, let's figure out what happens if you increase your quality score by one point. What is the decline in the corresponding first page bit? Okay, so the blue line, um, and the, uh, the, the numbers on the left here, so 12.5%, 25%, 37%. This is the decrease in first page bid estimate. And then on the x-axis on the bottom, you see the quality score. So if you were at a quality score of five and you increase your quality score by one point, so you go from a five to a six, you get roughly a 37% decrease in the first page bid estimate. But you can see it's not linear, right? So going from a one to a two, you get a big discount, but going from a two to a three, yeah, you get a discount, but it's not quite as big. Actually, it's the lowest discount in the system. Uh, once you get really high up in the ranges, like if you go from an eight to a nine, you get more than a 40% discount in what we measured. Uh, but so the point here is it's not linear. It's not a straight line. Um, so there's definitely something more complicated going on in the background. And, and me having been on the team, I can tell you that's the case, right? So it's not, a straight linear calculation. So let's figure out how this quality score is calculated. Well, first of all, what's really important to understand is that there's different flavors of quality scores. So there's a quality score for search, uh, one for content pages, there's a separate one for mobile. Um, so Google knows, depending on the context of where the search is happening, what the quality score for that specific situation is. Now, uh, the next thing to understand is that the quality score number between 1 and 10 that you see in the account, that's just an approximation. That's kind of Google's indication of how well your keyword is doing uh, generically on an average basis. So that's what you see in the account. But what's actually being used in the ad auction is much different. So you can see here uh, for this particular keyword, blue widgets, you may have a quality score of a 7. But if the keyword is blue widgets and the person just did a search for cheap blue widgets, Google actually calculates what they call PCTR. Uh, the P stands for predicted. So this is your predicted CTR for that specific auction. So that could be a number 15%. That percentage, that's actually what Google uses to determine your rank, your discount, your eligibility for all of the features that I talked about before. So, uh, so these two things are different. So then what goes into this quality score number of a one through a 10? Uh, as well as the real-time one, the predicted CTR. Well, quality score is based on three factors, click-through rate, relevancy, and landing page. Now, let me explain each of these a bit more. So number one, quality score is mostly a factor of CTR. So by far, CTR, click-through rate, is the most important factor that contributes to your quality score. You can go online, you can look at some videos by Hal Varian, who's uh, Google's chief economist, and he'll basically say CTR is the biggest factor. He won't tell you how much of a factor it is, 
uh, but it is the biggest one. And probably the reason he doesn't tell you how big the factor is, is that there's no real answer to that question. Uh, and let me back up for a second. So Google's quality score system is a, is a machine learning system. It's artificial intelligence, if you will. And so um, it's kind of like brain surgery, right? A brain surgeon generally knows where in the brain to cut to achieve certain bigger goals. Uh, if people have mental diseases, there are certain operation surgeries you can do to fix those issues. Uh, but no brain surgeon can tell you exactly which neurons do which specific things. So they kind of generically know. Uh, and that's the same with quality score. So maybe it's a kind of a strange comparison, but quality score is this learning system. It's almost like a brain in and of its own. So, and there's no person at Google who knows exactly how that brain is going to behave. We know how that brain has been programmed to behave, but it starts learning. It's a learning mechanism. So based on historical data it has seen, it's going to make new decisions that we can't exactly predict. So it will use different levels of CTR based on what it knows to be the right way to do it uh, from what it has learned in the past. Okay, And so when you ask Google a question, it's not that they're being evasive in giving you an answer. It's just that there is no real distinct answer to many of these questions. Okay, but so how does Google do it? How do they figure out what the CTR is for a keyword? Well, they look at three factors, as you can see here. They look at the account level, the keyword level, and the ad text level. So if you have a brand new keyword that you put into your account, you've never used it in the past, well, chances are somebody else somewhere across AdWords has advertised for that keyword. So Google will look keyword level data for all other advertisers. How has that performed? Okay, that gives you a base level CTR component. And then they look at your account and they say, well, historically, have you been a better than, better than average advertiser, worse than average, or average? Um, and to what degree have you been different from the average? So that's a factor they apply now in combination with that keyword to give you a starting quality score. Okay, but very quickly, Google starts to see how you specifically do for that keyword. So how other people have done becomes less and less important. So it becomes more a factor of how does your keyword do in conjunction with your ad text. Uh, by the way, they also look at how has your account done with a specific ad text. And they could look at just a visible URL in the domain, for example. So that's a factor as well. But really what Google wants to use is the combination between the keyword and the ad text, because that's what determines what people click on. And as soon as they have enough data about factor number three, that's really what Google wants to use. But in the absence of this data, Google may look at more generic factors in the system to give you a starting quality score. And so then a logical question that people often have is, well, how much data does Google need before they know what's happening? Uh, so we did an analysis, and what we saw here is what is the likelihood that your quality score is going to change after every uh, number of impressions? So after zero impressions, how, what's the percentage of keywords that change quality score when they get one more impression? Uh, so it's almost 60%. Okay, and if you go from one impression to roughly 10 impressions, well, it's still about half of the keywords are gonna change quality scores. And so we see a deflection point in this curve where it's pretty steep. Um, so there's a lot more keywords changing and then all of a sudden it flattens out, right? It becomes kind of a steady state. So we think after approximately 100 impressions, Google has a pretty good idea of what's happening uh, with your quality score. And so the quality score that you get after roughly 100 impressions is likely to stay the same unless you make some changes to the keywords, to the ad texts, and other things. But just waiting after the 100 impressions is probably not going to change things that much. And then the other thing to keep in mind is uh, when Google looks at what has been your click to the rate, they do tend to look at specifically exact match variants. Okay, and so this does not mean you have to have an exact match keyword, but what they say is, the keyword has to be exactly the same as what the query was, okay? So if the query was blue widgets and your keyword was blue widgets, so it's exactly the same thing. Even if this was a broad match keyword, the fact that the text is the same, the text between the, uh, the keyword and the query is the same. So that means Google's gonna look at it for your quality score number between one and 10. If, you're, if the query is by blue widgets, okay, there's an additional word in it now, so it's different. Um, from blue widgets, so Google's not gonna use that data for the quality score number. But they're gonna remember what happens for that specific query, and the next time that somebody searches for buy blue widgets, they're gonna use that information to give you a quality score at that specific moment in time, that specific auction. 
Okay, so here's the next factor of quality score. This is kind of the hand-waving one where people often get frustrated and they think Google's trying to hide something. So Google says relevancy is a factor in quality score. And so what they really mean is it's real-time relevancy. So at the time of the auction, what does Google know about the situation? Okay, what's the weather? What's the device somebody's searching on? What time of day is it? Are they searching from a tablet? Is it a specific day of the week? What specific words have they typed in the query? What has that user been looking for previously? And so all of these factors come in and they give Google a much better sense for what is likely to happen. And this is where the machine learning comes in. So the machine learning can look at all these thousands of factors and actually make a pretty good estimate of what's likely to happen next. And it's again, based on the wisdom of the crowds, which has now been applied to machine learning. Um, and so crazy story, but at one time at Google, we said we should see if the lunar cycle has an impact on people's click-through rate behavior. So we said, let's compare what happens between the phase of the moon and the CTR. Um, does that have an impact? Well, it turns out it didn't, okay? So we didn't use it as a factor in the system, but that's kind of what Google's trying to do. They're saying, let's look at anything that could have any uh, correlation to CTR, and if it seems to have a correlation, some useful information, then let's start using it as part of the system. Now, um, let me prove to you that CTR is really the main thing that Google looks at for quality score. Okay, so here's a formula that should make uh, sense. So CPM, cost per million, cost per impression, this is the old way that people would charge for advertising. So if you write that out, it means dollars per click uh, multiplied by clicks per impression. Okay, clicks per impression, of course, um, is CTR. Dollars per click is maximum CPC. Well, does that formula ring a bell to anyone? Maximum CPC multiplied by CTR? That's actually Google's ad rank formula. So even though Google says that they charge on a cost per click basis, they're actually running a cost per impression auction, which is a really nice way for Google to guarantee its revenues will increase so long as more people do more searches. And that's really important for, uh, for them as a business, right? So, but the factor here that's important to you as an advertiser is CTR. If you improve your CTR, you're helping Google's bottom line. So if you think there's all of these other factors going into it, no, not really. Google, by and large, cares about click-through rate as a main factor in terms of figuring out your rank for your ad because that's what makes the company more money and that's what the investors, of course, want. Okay, so the third factor is landing page quality uh, impact. So it's really a small part of quality score and you could ask the question, which of these two pages is better? Amazon on the left, eBay on the right. Well, guess what? It doesn't really matter. Both of these are great websites. They're uh, good business models. Uh, you could argue that Amazon's is better than eBay's, but that said, both of them are successful businesses in their own ways. And Google is not trying to judge who has the better business. Google is trying to judge two companies are scamming users, uh, that they're not using private data in ways that they shouldn't, okay? And so the reason that landing page quality score became a factor is that there's a lot of bad advertisers out there. Uh, probably none of you on the call, but there's a lot of advertisers trying to scam users, and this is what landing page quality score is going after, because they could have fantastic ad text, great keywords, but then once the user comes to the page, they have a lousy experience, they're, they get really upset, and Google is able to uh, fight that by having landing page quality as a component. And then technically, this is not part of quality score, but ad extensions. Uh, we should still talk about them because ad extensions have such a big impact on the click-through rate that people will see. And of course, if your click-through rate goes up, your CPC will go down, your ad rank will go up. So uh, even though it's kind of a, uh, an outside factor outside of the quality score system, it's still something you really should pay attention to. Okay, so how do you measure and improve quality score? This is gonna be our final section before we take some questions here. Uh, but your quality score is very easy to see in AdWords. You can just turn on a column that says, what is your quality score number from a one through a 10? And then you can also hover over it to get some additional insight into the subcomponents of quality score. So expect a click-through rate, ad relevance, and landing page experience. So if you have low quality score, these three subcomponents can tell you what is the probable thing that you need to go and fix. Um, in our quality score tool at Optimizer, we give you account level scores as well. So we can show you if your optimization efforts are paying off. And then there's other tools that kind of give you a tabular overview of the different components of quality scores so that you can see, uh, okay, maybe which is my keyword with the lowest ad relevance and go and fix that one first. 
So um, I've mentioned account level quality score. Google officially says it doesn't exist. Um, I say it doesn't exist, but it actually does matter because the learning system does consider it. Uh, so as I said, if you have a new keyword, Google has to start you off somewhere. The way that they figure out what level to start you at in terms of position is based on historically how has that keyword done for other advertisers and how good of an advertiser have you been. So how likely is it that you've been relevant with this new keyword? So, uh, so here's a formula that you can use to calculate your account level quality score. Honestly, I've put out some AdWords scripts which are free to download, so I would recommend you, uh, you do a search for those. Just install them in the account and, uh, and get all of this done automatically for yourself. Um, now, as far as tracking historical quality score, it's kind of nice to know how you've done over time, right? Like, have I improved my quality score or am I actually getting worse? Now, uh, this is kind of semantics, but quality score is an attribute and not a metric. And so what that means is that Google does not show you historical quality score levels. Uh, so you can't really see how your changes have impacted your quality scores. So some things you can do is download your keyword report every day, make sure the quality score column is enabled. Or use one of the AdWords scripts that I've written or some other people have written that will store this data automatically for you. Or you can use a, a tool like ours or like 10 scores to go in and look at historical quality score. And so here's uh, what our look at quality score, uh, what our view of quality score looks like. Okay, um, and again, you can see in our tool, for example, you could see what's the correlation between my quality score jumping up, so my blue line goes up dramatically, and then the green line is sort of my average CPC, so you can see how that has decreased as a result of an increase in quality score. So how do you fix uh, quality score? Well, this is a slide I presented in London, uh, but I think it's really funny, so I'm going to share it here as well. So I was in London last year, and I need some money, so I go to the ATM machine, put in my card, put in my PIN, and then the machine says, please wait a moment, we are dealing with your request. And I'm like, you're dealing with my request? Like, I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, because in America, when you use the word dealing with something, it's typically not, uh, doesn't have a positive connotation. Dealing with something is probably dealing with something you'd rather not be dealing with. So, but this is what the ATM machine in the, in the United Kingdom says. So to them, this is completely normal, but to us, this one word completely turns me off from wanting to use this machine, um, and if this was showing up in an ad, I'd be like, I don't want to work with that company. They already have attitude the moment I ask them a question. So uh, one word change can have a very dramatic impact in people's perception, and so uh, that can, of course, have a big impact on CTR, click-through rate, which is the main factor of quality score. So what can you do to have better quality score? Well, first of all, make sure you have tightly themed ad groups so that you have really close relevance between the keywords and the ad text. Uh, by the way, notice that at no point today have I said that campaign, uh, campaign structure or ad group structure matters to your quality score. Uh, there is no ad group level factor. There is no campaign level factor. Now, of course, the ad group defines the relationship between keywords and ad texts, so that's important. But if you took the exact same keyword and the exact same ad text and moved it to a different ad group, you would have the exact same quality score because that's what Google cares about. They don't care about what you name the campaign. They don't care about what you name the ad group. They care about which keyword triggers which ad text and how well that combination works in terms of CTR. So because ad text is so important, be sure you're always testing multiple ads in each ad group. And then use a compelling call to action. Tell people what it is they can expect to do after they click on your ad. With great studies, we won't talk about these today, uh, but if you tell people what to do, they actually go and look to do that action. Uh, people are very easy to lead. They want to be led. They don't want to be dropped on a page and have to figure out, oh, what do I do next? No, tell them what you want them to do. They'll go and do it if you made it really easy to find that action. And then use elements that boost click-through rate, like use the trademark symbol if you own the trademark. Use your brand name if you have a brand that people recognize. Uh, use all of the ad extension that makes sense. Okay, so I've said ad extensions are important. What I want to make sure I haven't conveyed is you do not have to use all ad extensions. You just have to use the ones that make sense for your business. So if you're looking to do online sales, you don't have to put in a phone call extension um, because that's not what you want people to do, right? So look at your competitors. What extensions have they turned on? It's probably a good idea to stay pretty close to what they're doing. Uh, but if you don't have all the extensions, that's fine. Just use the ones that make sense for your business and that will boost your click-through rate. 
And then if you have keywords that have lots of impressions and a low click-through rate, they'll probably have a low quality score. So those are keywords you want to go and fix. You can fix them by putting them in different ad groups with better ad text, right? So it's the whole grouping into more tightly themed ad groups. Or if the keyword is really not that relevant, maybe it's a little bit too generic, go and get rid of it because it is dragging down your account level quality score, which is going to make it harder for you to add new keywords in the future. And then the long tail matters as well. So if you have a ton of keywords with very low impression volume, but they all have low quality score, keep in mind that if you add up all of those impressions, it could actually represent a pretty significant portion of your account. So do take a look at the long tail periodically as well. So what does the ideal ad group look like? Well, I say somewhere between five and 30 closely related keywords. I've put out that stat for a long time and now people kind of think this is gospel. So this is actually a number that I put out uh, a decade ago when I was at Google. And uh, this is not an absolute number. So it's not like Google says, oh, this ad group has 31 keywords, hence let's reduce the quality score. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is much more, if you have more than 30 keywords, you can probably figure out how to split that up one more way and write more specific ad text for the two new groups that you have. Um, you can have single keyword ad groups, but that's not necessary. So it's completely fine to have a bunch of keywords together in the same ad group. Uh, don't rely on match types to improve your quality score, right? So a lot of people think by adding, so, so I said something about only exact match matters for quality score. Well, I want to be clear, that doesn't mean you have to have exact match keywords. It means there has to be an exact match between what the keyword is and what the query was. Um, and so kind of kicking myself now, but back in the day at Google, we didn't give it the most uh, clear name, right? We used exact match as a match type, but we also used exact match as how something matches in the auction between the keyword and the query. And so that's where that confusion kind of comes from. So don't worry about having different match types. Uh, just use the match types that make sense for your business. Use the match types to target the right people for your ads, but changing match type is not going to have an impact on quality score. Uh, absolutely use your branded keywords because those are going to have amazing CTR and amazing quality score. Um, and then negative keywords don't matter for quality score, right? Because Google looks at what is the, the CTR for impressions, like adding negatives uh, doesn't actually matter because it just reduces some of the broad match traffic. Um, Negatives are really good to have in your account, so don't get me wrong with that. Negatives are really good to help you target the right traffic, but they're not going to boost your quality score. Okay, and then for ads, test at least two variations. It's fine to use dynamic keyword insertion. If you're doing this, then Google will just insert whatever the keyword is, and that's what they're going to use to calculate the quality score. Like I said, use the ad extensions that make sense. Don't be gimmicky, but just be factual and convey information to the user. Now with the longer ad text, this is a great time to try some new things. Um, what I've seen is that still it's those very informational ads that tend to do the best. So kind of like pulling on emotional triggers. Uh, it works in traditional marketing, but I haven't seen it work that well in PPC and search advertising. And then the display URL absolutely matters. So nowadays you have much less control over this, but you still have path one and path two. So if you can put some relevant keywords in there, those can help you boost CTR as well. Okay, and some final best practices. So be patient, right? I told you that it takes roughly 100 impressions before Google knows what the quality score is going to be. So give it some time to let it settle in. And especially in the beginning, make sure you're bidding enough to be at the top of the page, because that way you're quickly gonna build up some traffic um, and get those better results. Now Google does do position normalization, which means that the ad in the top position is expected to get a better CTR. Google is going to measure how is it doing versus expectation. If it's missing expectation, even though the CTR is amazing, like say you have a 30% CTR, but Google expects that you should have gotten 40%, well your quality score is going to drop. The last ad on the page, maybe Google only expects it to get a 2% CTR and it gets a 3% CTR, well, that one, the quality score is going to rise and eventually the, the positions of those two ads may switch. Um, so take action when you see bad quality score is the next point. So optimize or delete poor quality score keywords and then do experimentation. There's nothing wrong with experimentation. Uh, people are very afraid sometimes to touch their AdWords accounts because they think if I touch it, the whole thing may just explode and not work anymore. Well, the nice thing about AdWords is it always keeps historical uh, data. So if you go back to what it was before, Google knows what happened in that case, and it'll bring you back to the quality score levels you had before. 
Um, so go and experiment, try to find something better. If it doesn't work out, just revert back. Okay, and then some people say we hate broad match keywords. Well, I love broad match keywords because they help me find new queries. Broad match keywords are bad if you're not managing your account. If you just say, here's a bunch of broad matches and I'll come back in six months. Well, guess what? In six months, you're gonna find out you've blown your whole budget on irrelevant traffic. But if you come back on a weekly basis and you look at what has Google shown your ads for, you're actually gonna find some really useful new keywords from those broad matches and you're also gonna find some really bad ones and you just make those negative keywords. So having a management uh, structure in place that looks at this on a frequent basis can really help you and, and broad match is actually a really good thing uh, to use there. Talked a lot about quality score. Uh, at the end of the day, no public company that I've ever uh, listened to uh, an earnings call has talked about quality score except Google, of course, right? Uh, but nobody else cares about quality score. It's not a business metric. It's not a business KPI. So quality score is Google's indication to you of how relevant you are, how relevant users think you are. So use it to improve your account. Use it to try to get lower CPCs, better positions. But at the end of the day, don't stress over it too much. I've seen plenty of advertisers that have a quality score for keyword, and it's making them a ton of money. Okay, so they could make even more money if it became a quality score of five, but definitely don't go and pause a keyword just because it has a bad quality score. You have to be more sophisticated than that. So use it as a, a guiding star to get your account to be better, but don't stress over it too much. So uh, that brings me to the end of what I wanted to share. Um, Phil, were there any questions that people might have? Yes, there are some questions. First, Fred, that was great. Uh, we did get some feedback here that this is a great webinar. I really appreciate it. I've got a lot of no notes and uh, a couple questions, but I'll go through the questions that have come in. Um, just to relay, um, a couple of people asked if they're getting the slides or the replay. We are going to, we are recording this and we'll send a replay typically within about 48 hours. So we'll get a copy of the video and the slides. Um, and then a question from David here. Is there an easy way to track quality score improvement over time? That's a great question. And so that's actually one of the things we do at Optimizer. Um, so that's our URL right there. We have a historical quality score tracking tool. Uh, the moment that you connect an AdWords account to our system, we will take a daily snapshot of every keyword. And we will also calculate ad group, campaign, and account level quality scores. I will also show you a big table of the subcomponents of quality score for each keyword, each ad group, each campaign, and each account. So it really helps you hone in on those portions that you could improve. And it also helps you to see um, if changes that you've made to the account historically have improved or uh, decreased your quality score. Okay, great. And uh, next question here is from Jan. Do, this, is, uh, this gets into product listing ads. So do higher bounce rates in Google shopping campaigns drag down the quality score of the entire AdWords account? No, that's a great question. And so shopping campaigns or PLAs, product listing ads, they have their own quality score mechanism. Um, and the last that I know it was actually, um, what level was it at? So it was based on the product ID that you put in your feed. So if you find that you've had poor CTR, uh, bad click-through rate in some product listing ads, maybe because you didn't have great prices or because the image wasn't fantastic, you can change your, uh, your item SKU in your own feed, and that resets the quality score from Google's perspective. Um, at, at, least, at least that's how they used to do it. They may have caught up and do it a little bit more uh, better, I suppose, at this point. Uh, but that was kind of a little trick that I know was working uh, recently. Um, and no, they don't impact each other, right? So how I said that there's a separate quality score for search partners and mobile devices and the content and display network. Um, shopping ads is separate as well. So Google considers each of these independently. And really what they want to do is they want to have a level playing field. So they want to say for all people advertising on Google search on keywords, how are they doing compared to one another? That helps them do the ranking. Um, but how you do on something more experimental or something newer like shopping ads, that doesn't matter. And how about, um, a question, just a follow-up question from me, how about uh, 
YouTube uh, in-stream video ads, do they have their own quality score? Yeah, so honestly, I don't know that much um, about how the quality score on those would work. Um, again, think about it from a revenue and monetization perspective for Google. So if you find that you have a video that doesn't get people to watch through, um, you know, to the 30 seconds, then Google's making no money for these, right? So given the option to show your ad, which, you know, maybe gets your branding out in the first five seconds, but people don't continue to watch it, versus somebody else who does make them a lot of money, well, Google's going to choose the ad that makes some money. Um, right. And so how that's measured, obviously, is different on YouTube. It's not about click-through rate, but it's about how many people um, view to completion or to the monetization point. Um, so, yeah, but I don't know exactly how it works. Okay. And I had a, a question while you were going through um, optimization techniques. You, meant, you mentioned deleting keywords. And my question was just, in your experience, how fast can your account level quality score change? Let's just say you've been running some ads and you go in and you see that you just have a ton of quality score one keywords and you go and delete all of those. How fast can you typically see your whole account quality score go up? Yeah, so if you look at the account quality score number calculation, you will see it go up quite quickly. But from Google's perspective, what they will want to see is that now you've gotten a decent number of impressions at a much higher overall quality score number. Um, and so if you've been weighed down by five years of horrible quality score with all of these quality score one keywords, it could take a significant amount of time. Um, now, in the days that I was working at Google, significant amount of time meant up to two weeks. So after two weeks, Google will generally catch up with any changes that you've made, and those will be reflected. Um, but that, so and, and to be really clear about that, that's two weeks of accruing impressions. Of course, if you have a really high impression account, then it could take only a few hours, it could take a day. Uh, but if you have a smaller account, two weeks is generally the most that it takes Google to figure out what's going on. Okay. That's helpful. Uh, let's see. I think another one just came in here uh, from Jan. Are competitor brand terms with low quality scores worth keeping or should they be removed? So there it's a question of how successful you are with this keyword. So if you're actually driving new business from it um, at a good CPA, then I would keep them. It, it's really hard to quantify exactly how much additional cost um, they produce for new keywords that you're trying to add. So, so I, if you have an account and you're constantly adding new keywords and you have this whole batch of low quality score keywords kind of dragging down your account level score, then it's almost like every day you're paying a penalty for all of these new keywords to prove themselves. If your account is mostly steady state, you don't add too many new keywords, um, um, on a daily or a weekly basis, then it's probably not that big of, of an impact, right? Because remember that Google uses the, the CTR of the keyword to the ad text. That's what they care about. They don't care about the account level data unless they don't have enough data between keyword and ad text. Um, so that's kind of where this advertising on brand, on competitor brands with a low quality score could potentially hurt you. It gives you a low account level quality score and it puts in place a penalty for any new keywords to start proving themselves. So Google would say these new keywords are probably not going to do very well because you as an advertiser don't do so well. Okay, so now 100 impressions later you've proven, oh, these are actually really good keywords. Um, they get a good CTR, so then you're fine. But in that first 100 impressions, any clicks you get could be quite expensive. That's a great point. And uh, just going back to my question, uh, it actually doesn't matter then unless you're adding new keywords. So again, my question was, let's say you have an account with a ton of low quality score keywords and then you go in and delete those because you're trying to improve the account level quality score. <clears throat> to your point, that actually wouldn't affect existing keywords that you know have built up history with the, the uh, click-through rate and the ad copy. Exactly. That so that's exactly right. And so what's going to be interesting here on October 10th when Google introduces the null state of quality score, 
is that we're going to have far better insight in how many keywords Google is still trying to figure out. So if I look at my account on October 10th and it says, oh, you have 5,000 keywords that we have no clue about and I have a low account level quality score, well, then I'm going to be worried because then it's going to tell me that these 5,000 keywords I really want to advertise on are just really hard for me to get started with because of my low account quality score. If I look and it's in keywords that Google doesn't know about, then I'm like, okay, I don't care that much. I'll just pay a little bit more for these 15, um, and I'll keep all of these other keywords running too. Got it. That makes sense. All right. Well, we hit the uh, the mount, the hour mark. I know Fred, you've got another meeting to get to. Uh, again, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your day. This was a great presentation, and a lot of positive feedback from everyone on the line. So thank you. All right. Glad to hear it. Well, thanks everyone for taking time out of your busy days as well. Um, as a final little bonus, anyone who signs up for Optimizer, there's a free trial, but I'll give you a 10% discount on your uh, initial sign up too if you just shoot me an email. Um, and my email is right there on the slides right now. So um, that's out there for anyone who wants to take advantage. Great. Thanks, Fred. Thank you, Phil. Uh, everyone, take care. Have a great week. Bye bye.